G'day everyone, my name's Barney and today we're going to be making a Starfield light speed effect just like you've seen in the movies and also probably just like you've seen on the Coding Train channel because Daniel Schiffman is prolific and he's done pretty much every project that you can do inside of P5JS. So if you want to check out that video, I'll link it up here. Otherwise, I'm going to jump into my take on it right now. So to get started, we're going to make a star class and this is just going to hold all of the information for each star on the screen. So into the constructor, we're passing the X and the Y location that it'll be on the screen and we're storing this in a vector called position. And we're also storing the previous position in a vector as well, but we are just copying the same X and Y location to start with. We're also going to give it an initial velocity of zero. So we're creating a vector for that as well. And the way this effect is going to work is all of the stars are going to move away from the center of the screen. And in order to do that, we need to know the angle between the center of the screen and the point so it can keep moving in that direction. And we just simply calculate this using the inverse tan function. And so it takes in a difference in the Y and a difference in the X in order to figure out the angle. And so we're just passing in the Y location minus the middle of the screen and the X location minus the middle of the screen as well. And this gives us the angle we need to travel in. So that's the constructor done. Now we're going to move on to updating the actual position of the star. The way this is going to work is we're going to pass in an acceleration value into the update function, which will get called each frame. And we're going to use this to figure out how far we need to move the position of the star each frame. And we figure this out by using the angle that we calculated in the constructor and we use the cosine function to figure out how far we need to move on the x for that angle and we multiply that by the acceleration and then we do the same thing for the y but use the sine function instead of the cosine function. So now stored in the velocity x and y we've got how far we need to travel on the x and the y axis in order to move our star in the right direction at the right speed. So now what we've got to do is save where the star currently is on the screen into the previous position x and y and then we're going to update the current x and y by adding the velocity x and y to the position. So we're just going to be moving away from the middle of the screen at an accelerating rate. And lastly, for the draw function, we're just going to put in a line at the moment and it's going to be drawn between the current position and the previous position. So this just means as the star is moving faster, that line will stretch out and give it that light speed effect. So now we've defined the star object, we can start creating them and actually drawing them on the screen. And in order to do that, I've defined how many stars I want. So I've started with 500, but you can have more or less depending on what you want. And I've also created an array of stars, which will hold all of the stars that we're currently drawing and updating on the screen. Then inside our setup function, I'm going to do a for loop over all of the values between zero and the number of stars we want. And for each one of them, I'm going to push in a new star into our stars list. And I'm just giving it a random location on the screen. So the X value is somewhere randomly in the width and the Y is somewhere randomly in the height. So now in the setup, we've created all of our star objects. So in the draw function, we can now start updating them and actually displaying them on the screen. If you recall, the update function for the star takes in an acceleration value. So I'm calculating that based on the mouse X position and I'm mapping that from between zero and the width of the screen to between a very, very, very small number and a slightly less small number. Now, these are just values that I found to work, but please play around with these and customize it for yourself and maybe find out a fun way of figuring out this acceleration value. It doesn't have to just be the mouse X coordinate. So now we're going to loop over all of the stars in our stars list using a for each function on that list. And the way this works is you give it a function that gets called for each object in your list. So here I'm taking in a star and for each of these stars, I am going to draw that star and then I'm going to update it with the acceleration value that we've given it. So now when we run this, you can see we've got a bunch of little dots on the screen all moving away from the center of the screen. But as you can see, they all, once they're off the screen, that's it, they've disappeared. So we're going to do something to fix that. So the problem we're facing is actually twofold. So firstly, our stars are going off the screen, but we don't know that they've left the screen yet. And so they're still being updated and drawn, which is just taking up computing power because they're not being displayed. The second part of it is we're not creating new stars to fill in the void where the old stars have left. So the way we're going to fix this is we're going to detect when stars have gone off the screen and when they have, we're going to remove them from our array. And then we're going to fill up for each one that we remove, we're going to replace it with a new one somewhere randomly on the screen. To detect when a star is off the screen, I've now got an on screen function, which takes in an X and a Y location. And this is essentially just a collision detection between a point and a rectangle. So if this X and Y coordinate is within the bounds of the screen, this will return true. Otherwise it'll return false. 
and we can actually use that inside of our star object to detect whether the star we're currently on is active or not. So I've now added an is active function to our star and it just checks if its previous position is on the screen. Now the reason we use the previous position is because since we're drawing a line between our current and previous position, the previous position is gonna be closer to the center of the screen and is actually gonna be the last one to leave the screen. So we're gonna check that one instead of the current position. So the old me would have gone through the stars array backwards and found out if we were off the screen of any of these stars and remove them from our stars array and blah, blah, blah. But it turns out JavaScript's already got that sorted with the filter function on an array. So instead of using the for each, we're gonna use this filter function, which is very similar. So we still give it a function and it still goes through each of our objects and passes them into our function. But now what we can do is we can return a Boolean value. And so if we return true, we're gonna keep it into the next iteration of our array. And if we return false, it's gonna remove it for us. So we can just return whether the star is active or not. One thing to keep in mind here is that the filtered array is actually returned. So we need to replace our stars array with the return of this filter function. Big shout out to erg erg erg, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, who left a comment letting me know about this filter function. So if you've got any suggestions for the code, how I can make it better, please let me know in the comments as well. So this has fixed our first issue of the stars not being removed once they're off the screen, but obviously we can't see that visually yet. So what we're gonna do now is tackle the second problem, which was to add new stars in. And thankfully this is really straightforward. All we need to do is do a while loop. So while the length of our stars array is less than the number of stars we want, we're just gonna push in some new stars randomly on the screen. So now when we run this, you can see that we get some new stars populating where the old stars were. So they're getting replaced infinitely in this star field. So it just keeps coming and coming and coming and accelerating through it looks amazing. So one of the things that makes the movie versions of these warp speed effects really cool is how they sort of fade in and out. So at the moment, currently all of our lines are really crisp, but we want them to sort of drag out a bit. And the way we're gonna achieve that is actually incredibly straightforward. So at the moment, our background call at the start of our draw function is completely replacing the canvas with a black background each time. And we're losing all of the visual data for where those stars used to be. So the way we can fix this is instead of making it an opaque black background every single time, we can just do a transparent black each time. And so we'll keep a little bit of that information about where the stars used to be on the canvas. And thankfully P5 makes this super simple. I'm just passing in 50 for our opacity value, which goes between zero and 255 as well. So if we rerun this, you can see we get that really drawn out effect, which is looking amazing. The last thing I wanna fix is that when a new star is put onto the screen somewhere, it just suddenly appears, whereas I feel like it should fade in. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna look at how quickly the star is moving. Cause remember when the star begins, we give it a velocity of zero. So as that velocity increases, we're gonna increase the opacity of the star as well. So back down in the draw function for our star, we've just got a simple little calculation to figure out the alpha value for our star that we're currently drawing. And the way we're figuring it out is we're mapping the magnitude of the velocity. So this is essentially how big that vector is. And we're mapping it from between zero and three to be between zero and 255. Now the velocity of our star will probably get bigger than three, but this doesn't matter because the stroke function and all of the colors in P5JS, if you give it a value above 255, it'll just cap it at 255. So essentially what we're saying is for the first little bit of the acceleration, we're gonna fade in to a full white. And then after that, it's just gonna be solid white the whole time. And now when we run this, you can see that our stars really nicely fade into existence and they give us that really iconic looking movie grade warp speed effect. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have, please give this video a like, it would help me out immensely. If you've got any suggestions or improvements, then let me know in the comments because I do read them all and I try to reply to every single one. Now YouTube reckons you'd like this video next, so be sure to check that out. Otherwise, there's a playlist here with all of my other P5JS videos in it, so you can become a code wizard in no time. Otherwise, I'll see you later.